Now the coordinate system we're going to use here is fairly obvious. We're going to use polar coordinates. And in polar coordinates, if I was to have... Uh, typically what you do in your polar coordinates is you align your, your z-axis with some pole. And because we're rotating around an axis, I'll pick that one. And so we'll have a z-x and a y. Something like that. And you probably should remember the polar coordinates uh, transforms. So obviously they all scale with R. And the angle, remember, if I've got a general point coming out of here in polar coordinates, the angle down from the, the Z axis is theta. And so the Z is just R cos theta, which means both of these have R sine thetas in them. And then splitting around the xy plane, you have x being cos phi and y being sine phi. That's all fine. And note we have a fixed r here because we're not really moving in three space, we're just moving on the surface of that sphere. So only two parameters really are just this theta and phi. And we know we're going to need the derivatives of that, but we'll leave that just for the moment. Our Lagrangian is just the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. Our kinetic energy is just half m x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared. And our potential energy is whatever this potential gives us. And we can expand this out. So this is just a matter of taking the derivatives of these and expanding out. Now, if I was to do this, what I would tend to do is I would tend to do it very fast because I've done this a large number of times. But I'd be looking very much for keeping my units correct. I'd be looking very much for all my sine squares and cos squares collapsing down, except perhaps for one. And I would also be thinking about doing it by Mathematica instead. But if I were to not do it by Mathematica, the process from here is in fact completely recipe driven. And as such, I'll let you do that yourselves.